If you own a lot of tools, your tool collection is probably either like this or like this. If you prefer to keep your tools organized like me, this video is for you. Today, I'll be reviewing and comparing the Milwaukee 15 inch Packout Tote to a few other options that are similar in price and usability. This tote includes pockets, compartments, straps, and clips. But is it enough to effectively organize and transport your tools? Let's figure it out by evaluating this bag in five different categories. Pricing, build quality, design and features, storage capabilities, and it's room for improvement. What's up guys, Jake here. Let's get started with the pricing. The 15 inch tote comes in at $99. The two other pack out totes, the 10 inch is $74.97 and the larger 20 inch is $132.97. I think that the 20 inch is the worst option because when attached to the top of your box, it uses the whole lid and it can also get easily overloaded. The 10 inch does have some value and it might be nice if you also wanted to lock in a pack out cup on the lid or another small item. Comment below if you have it or think I should check it out. Other comparable items are the Packout Backpack coming in at $129 and the 15 inch Packout Bag coming in at $59.97. I think that this tote is pretty fairly priced. If we compare it to other brands like Husky, Craftsman, and DeWalt, their totes range from $40 to $100 as well. And those products are obviously not compatible with the Packout system. If the $100 price tag concerns you, I really want to emphasize that we are mainly paying for the packout compatibility. Sure, you can attach some packout feet to whatever you want, but also that does have a cost and it more than likely will take time and energy to mount your non-packout item to the rest of the system. Next up, build quality. Just like every other product in the packout system, the quality is top notch. It's obviously not going to be as rugged as something from Vito, but with Packout, you're still not paying that super high price tag. The Packout tote is mostly made from 1680D nylon. It has tear resistant pockets, a beefy handle, and an impact resistant plastic bottom. Another nice thing about the plastic bottom is that you can easily clean it off if you happen to place it down onto your truck bed or ground that is a little bit dirty or wet. I'm always careful with my fabric bags because I don't want to deal with anything soaking through and leading to any rust accumulating on my tools. To help avoid that, make sure to throw a silica packet or two into your bags and boxes. If we look at the metal parts of the bag, they're all sewn or riveted in very securely. The shoulder strap rings seem very strong and I often clip additional things to them. Such as my keys, small tool pouches, or other accessories like the cord mate. If you haven't heard of it, it's a new product I've been testing. For more details on this handy magnetic tool, check out their website linked in the description below. The handle is secured to the middle panel and reinforced with several rivets. I like the diameter and grip of the handle. Of course, alternatives like the webbing on the backpack and bags are comfortable, but I'm glad that they went with a rigid handle on this tote. If we compare it to the Packout Backpacks tape hook, the construction is different. The backpack's clip is thicker and doesn't fold in at the bottom, which gives a more secure fit and uses the full depth of the tape measures belt clip. The tote's clip is thinner and doesn't let any tape measures I have clip in all the way. That's why I usually avoid using it because I've had tape measures fall off while moving the bag. Your experience might vary depending on the amount of tension in your tape measures belt clip. Of the few tapes I've tested, Milwaukee's 25 foot auto lock seems to be the most secure. Other items that you could use this tape clip for are power tools with a belt clip. Most drills I have fit pretty well on this clip and then save space inside the tote. If you decide to use this as a tape measure clip, you can always use the D-ring on the other side for the shoulder strap.
doesn't work as well with the smaller M12 clip, but the bigger installation driver one and the M18 work well. The last aspect of build quality I'll mention is this tape strap. I wish they used a slightly beefier clip. The clip on the Packout backpack is a different design and has a slightly stronger spring. One final mention about the build quality is that this toad is obviously not indestructible. If you read online reviews, there's been a few complaints about the fabric or pockets ripping at the seams. My dad has been using this to organize his main hand tools for the last few months, and we haven't noticed any issues. The material choice and overall construction seem to be equivalent to my Packout backpack. I've been using it for over two years, carrying it back and forth to college, theater jobs, and while I was a circus performer and lead rigger last summer. Even though my dad and I are mainly DIYers, we try to invest in high quality tools and always take good care of them. I expect these products to last us a long time. Next up, design and features. The most notable feature is gonna be the pack out feet, allowing you to click this tote into any stack and roll to the job site. The only other toolbox systems that currently offer similar options are DeWalt Tough System and Craftsman Trade Stack. If you want to leave your larger stack behind, the handle or shoulder strap combined with the padding on the right side can be a comfortable way to transport a smaller amount of tools. Another cool thing about the Packout system is creating a mini stack. Attaching an extra organizer to the base enables you to bring fasteners, extra hand tools, or even more power tools to your project. The 15 inch bag and backpack can carry those same organizers. But one secret benefit to the Packout backpack is the ability to work as a DIY backpack vacuum. A product I think would work well with this tote or really any half size Packout item is a compact dolly. Unfortunately, Milwaukee hasn't made one yet. If you need some inspiration to create your own, check out how I made mine in this video. For optimizing your setup, you're going to need a lot of pockets. The Packout Tote has a total of 31. The Packout Backpack has a few more at 48. But more than likely, you're not going to use all the pockets on either bag. This tote is split into two sides, with pockets and without. I wish Milwaukee did make this tote a bit more customizable with some removable pockets or even if this center panel was removable. Although there is a lack of customization, I do have a solution for that I'll share in just a minute. Let's start with the pockets on this center panel that are similar to the ones on the Packout backpack. There's 12 total pockets on this side. It consists of a tiered system using two sleeves inside of one shorter one inside of one lower pocket. They're actually all connected and these top sleeves feed directly into the bottom pocket. So no matter what tools you put in, it will all hit this bottom pocket. So there is a possibility that that would wear out. I want to point out that one of these top sleeves is actually a protected plastic pocket for sharp objects. Having the reinforcement is nice, but it is actually shorter than the protected pocket on the Packout backpack. There are a few teeth that are exposed, which is why I actually use this DIY cardboard sheath, and then it can go in any pocket. I do have plans to make and sell. 3D printed version I'll sell on my website soon. Comment below if you'd be interested in one. Another important difference between these pockets and the Packout backpack is the lack of elastic straps above these pockets. So if you have any longer items, like a long screwdriver, it will move around a lot. The Packout backpack's tiered pockets have these elastic bands, so when you put in a long screwdriver, keeps them more upright and the weight is more centered in the bag. And the protected pocket in the Packout backpack is long enough to accept a drywall saw and hold it on the handle instead of the tip of the blade. On the outside panel of this tote, there are three wider and slightly deeper pockets than the middle, but they don't have any flex to them, so they are more geared towards flatter items.
once you start loading up these pockets on this side of the tote, you will notice that quickly it does start to get pretty cramped. Since there are a good amount of pockets though, I think you can play around with your configuration until you find something that works for you. The other side of the tote is wide open for power tools, bit cases, or other gear. It measures about 15 inches from side to side, four and a quarter from inside to outside, and on the outside wall, it's just over eight inches deep. But once again, I think Milwaukee could have improved this design by including some removable pockets or at least some elastic webbing to attach things to the side and keep it more upright. If you need some more storage on this side, you can obviously use some sort of tool belt accessory that can clip on the side or sit inside that adds some extra pockets or even a zippered pouch. In a couple minutes, I'll be talking more in depth about the new products I'm designing that will increase the customizability of this side. At the top of this side is the zippered pouch. It's not very deep or expandable, but there is enough room to fit a ruler, zip ties, and some pencils or other flat objects. The outside pocket is pretty much the same story as the top one. As you can see, it's not very flexible. You might be able to squeeze your phone in there or maybe a thin notebook, but really not much more. If you use an oscillating multi-tool a lot, I have one more item that will fit good in this pocket. These multi-tool blades are from toolant.com. I reviewed them in a recent video, and they are from the same manufacturer as Milwaukee. They come in this nice low profile case, and I'll link them in the description below. On the front of the bag, there are two pockets. There's a pretty steep taper to them, so I would personally avoid putting any longer items in them. If you can't decide what to use them for, I've found them to be pretty good size for safety glasses or fastbacks. On the back of the bag, there are six pencil slots and a tape strap. Once again, these pockets do have a pretty steep taper, but they're a little bit longer, so I think most utensils should fit in them fine. And the last feature are these two level straps on the front. Straps are highly adjustable, so most levels should work. But I would recommend using only a 15 inch as a two foot level like this is a bit awkward to carry around. If you don't think you'll be using this to carry a level, other uses I've found for it are holding gloves or even extra rolls of tape. Now let's see how the tote compares to the backpack in the storage test. I have about 50 items here. Let's see how well they fit in each bag and how much room is left over. Obviously, this test is a bit extreme. These 50 items have some redundancy. However, I think there is some value when pushing these two products to the limit in this test. During the totes test, I put most of the hand tools into the pockets immediately. I did run out kind of quickly though, as I loaded up the taller pockets in the middle. And it was harder to use the smaller pockets down below because of how cramped it was getting. The open side was definitely nice for the drills, my hammer, and a bit case. But since there are less pockets than the backpack, I did have to stuff a few small items into the open side. Now let's transfer the tools to the backpack. Right off the bat, the wide opening angle of the backpack makes viewing and grabbing your tools more convenient. The increased number of pockets in the main compartment made storing the hand tools a little bit easier, but the larger items were gonna be more cramped. As I touched on my backpack review video, the second compartment is very handy. It has extra pockets that are uniquely sized and help spread out some of the load.
As you can see, the backpack and tote accommodate all the items. The backpack might have performed a little bit better, but at the end of the day, both products hold a similar amount of tools and will work for a wide range of situations. Last but not least, room for improvement. Although this tote does have many positive design elements, I have a few ideas if Milwaukee were to make a version 2. A removable center panel could accommodate larger items and combat most complaints of small storage capacity. There are many other totes available with removable panels or pockets, so if Milwaukee were to do this, they could compete better with those options from brands like Vito. Other storage improvements could be adding molly webbing on either side some large zipper pockets, and some removable bins. As I showed before, these are 3D printed prototypes of large organizer bins for the open side. I have a few plans for other types as well. So if you're interested in adding one to your tote, let me know in the comments below. I will add a link in the description when it's ready to purchase on whyhedesigns.com. As I touched on earlier, the zipper pouches should be made deeper and stretchier. A unique feature could also be a somewhat removable or expandable side panel. If they place zippers on the outside corners, the side could be opened at a slight angle or even flip all the way down. The backpack has these two pieces of webbing that limit the angle when it opens. It would be cool if the tote had a similar version that allowed for a limited opening angle. That would help with the accessibility of all the pockets or if you drop something lower in the tote. And the last thing I wish this tote included is a protective cover. Many camera bags or backpacks have rain resistant covers that attach in seconds. It could be stored on the same side as the existing padding and serve two purposes. When not in use, it could still provide some cushioning, but when removed from a zippered pouch and stretched over the entire bag, it could provide a possible theft deterrent ensure items stay secure during transport, and provide some rain resistance. Thanks for checking out this video on the Packout 15 inch tote. If you have one or have questions about it, make sure to comment below. As always, smash the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to get notified of future tool content. See you in the next one.